Hello, I'm Dustin Kruger with Kruger's Training Academy. And with this video, I wanted to show you guys the possible failures that you're gonna encounter when doing a practical exam, whether it's with ABPA or the others like AWWA or local counties. Uh, anything that's based on the USC 10th edition. Essentially what we have here is a PVB Febco hooked up, similar to what you're gonna find on the practical exam. You might find them in trees, you might find them set up. The way we have them are independent ones. And we have a test fitting setup that is published by USC. This is what most of the proctors are gonna use, most of the people hosting exams. And it's essentially just a series of T's and valves and hoses that hook up to simulate failures. Uh, the USC 10th edition on the diagnostics, it does show quite a few multiple failures, they call it, where like the check valve's leaking and the air inlet's leaking. Uh, per the, US, the American Backflow Prevention Association's Operations and Procedures Manual, there's only a few possible things that they're going to have as far as conditions. Leaky check valve, leaky number one, leaky number two, malfunctioning air inlet, or a proper operating assembly. Uh, so you're never going to come across multiple failures when you're doing the exam. You could in the field, it's totally possible. But um, during the ABPA exam, which you all are studying for, I'm sure, you're not, you're not going to run into that. So essentially, you can mock failures. If you want to mock check valve one, you open a couple of needle valves things like that. Uh, one thing that's a possible on the ABPA book, but is not possible with the test kit, with the T's, is a malfunctioning air inlet. So let's say you have a, something stuck in the air inlet, water's gonna be running all over. By the time you go to take the test, it's gonna look very funny. Uh, so they're not gonna simulate that. It, you can pretty much bank on it that they're not gonna simulate that. Um, however, maybe someone might pull the spring out to have a not, op, not opening one. Uh, you won't find that on the exams that we host, but it's possible that you might come across that. But we're gonna focus on the ones that you're most likely gonna see when you're taking your exam, and that's leaky outlet shutoff, leaky inlet shutoff, and leaking number one check. So essentially, you hook everything up, you're doing the air inlet test. So obviously you would flush your test cox and all that, but we're not gonna do that. You open the um, test cock two, bleed it off. We're using a Kruger Instruments TK2 test kit. Uh, you might be using a five valve kit. If you're using a five valve kit, basically this is the high bleed, this is the low bleed. You're all, it, all of these are one hose procedures, so you could use a two valve, five valve, whatever. Uh, we use the two valve in our classes. Uh, so it's, it's gonna be applicable whatever test kit you're using. So normally you would shut outlet, shut inlet, then open this. If you have a simulated outlet shutoff valve leak, they would open this and open the outlet. And what happens is, so see, it, and you can kind of tell if you have an open outlet because water's coming out. They might have it hidden. They might have different things going on, but if you see that, you, that's a good indicator that they probably failed that. So what happens is when you go to do this test, instead of opening high, when you shut this, the pressure just starts dropping. So you wanna go ahead and get the air inlet point while that's happening. So 2.4. So basically, if you have a leaky outlet shut off, you just get the air inlet opening point. While Once you shut shut off one, you might wanna restart if you come across that because you might not have gotten it. But if you shut shut off one, starts dropping, you just get the air inlet and there's no additional steps. There's nothing tricky with that but um, you just need to get the air inlet. And then it, that actually that leaky outlet shutoff, it wouldn't really impact your check valve test. So basically the only thing you're gonna see if you have a leaky outlet shutoff and that's the condition they put it in is that when you go to fill out your test report on the performance exam, you just say air inlet open, opened at this amount, fully open. In the comments, you say leaky outlet shutoff. The check valve is not affected. So whatever reading you get for the check valve, you'd also write that down. Now, if you continue the test, you shut test cock two, remove equipment, re-energize the system, attach this, open test cock one, open this, and now you say you're testing the check valve. Again, if you have a leaky outlet shutoff valve, that's not gonna impact this. Although when you shut this, it will start going down to the air inlet opening point and then you'll get your check valve. When you shut this, 
and you open that, that's the next step. If you have a leaking check valve and that's what they've simulated, they open these two. And what will happen is when you open test cock two to get your reading, it just goes to zero. So if you have a simulated failure, the failure is check valve one, you wait until this stops dripping, which should, it takes some time sometimes, but it'll just go to zero. So if you don't have that happening, it'll go to the, to the check valve opening point. So if there is no failure, it'll drop to the check valve opening point 1.2. If you do have a failure, it'll drop all the way to zero. The last one, the inlet shutoff leak, they would actually open the first and the second valves on the test fitting setup. And essentially you can kind of see it happening. It just bypasses the inlet shutoff. So what happens is when you're doing your test, open this, you shut this, you open test cock two, and it just never stops running. Sometimes you can get it too, too much for me. So essentially you're sitting here, it is whatever reading you have. You're supposed to wait until this is only a drip, but if you have a leaky inlet shutoff, it'll never stop, it'll just keep going. So what you do is you open the bleed off T to compensate. It's very, you gotta be very careful not to open it too far because if you open it too far, your gauge drops. So similar to the double check valve, you get it down to just a drip. I think I opened it too far on that one. And then you get your check valve reading. So you can still get the check valve reading even if you have a leaky inlet shutoff. You just have to open up your bleed off tape. So when you're filling out these, really any of the failures that they'll simulate on the PVB, you still can check everything, except if they fail the air inlet valve, which they probably won't because the test kits won't allow, the test fitting setup won't allow you. So essentially in the comments, you'd write, if it's leaky number one shut off, you write leaky number one shut off in the comments. So that concludes the possible failures for the PVB. Thanks for joining us. I actually have more information and more resources for you to prepare for the ABPA exam on our website at Krugerstraining.academy.